Um, you, you're still without three key players through injury in McTominay, Anthony and Anthony Martial. Do you expect them to be ready for the cup final or is it likely to be longer? This one, so yeah. It looks, um, it looks good. I think uh, they are on the way back. Um, they're coming back on the training ground, individual. Uh, I think in the end of the week, uh, maybe Scott can make the uh, entree in the team. And after the weekend, we plan Anthony. But we have to see, um, they have to, of course, making the progress, what we see now. And you, you're coming up against a player in Frankie de Jong, who became a terrific player for you at Ajax. Uh, what is it that makes him such a, a special player? Um, <clears throat> um, so I think we had like a class in 2019. It was, um, it was a team it was with a lot of fascination. And he brings a lot of that fascination. Um, and I think he develops uh, in, the, in the years after here in Spain. Uh, he became even better. Uh, um, he's a fantastic player, uh, playing out from the back. He always has time. Um, and so it was a pleasure to work with him. Hi, Eric. Um, obviously, you're without Lissandro Martinez tomorrow through suspension. How big a blow is that to you? And how confident are you that the guy next to you might be able to step up at centre-back against the likes of Lewandowski? Well, we have... Um, many options, I think, <laughs> in the squad to sort it out, and yeah, we can use uh, look as a fullback and as a centre back. <laughs> we have seen in the weekend he did both, and both he did very well. Um, but we have um, in the centre half also very good other options, and they did also well. And uh, we can uh, choose by game uh, what we prefer. Uh, question for Luke: Just wondering. If this is the acid test, perhaps, of your development as a team this season, you've obviously done very well and won some big games, but this feels like another level entirely. Yeah, of course. Um, it's obviously a very big game. Um, it's one we're obviously all very looking forward to. Um, and, yeah, I think it's it's going to be a big test. It will show us where we are. Um, but, you know, I think where we are at the moment, we're we're ready for it. Eric, Xavi was very complimentary of you today. He said you're a reference point for offensive coaches and he likes what you've done at United because it was a very difficult club to transform. What do you make of his comments and what do you think of the job he's doing with Barcelona? I think Barca is also a very difficult club. <laughs> and, uh, and I think Barcelona is in this moment is playing his best football since several years. And, but I think it's in the in the mind of uh, and the inspiration of Johan Cruyff hey, still you feel it here and you can see if you see uh, the game of Barcelona you see uh, the way of play and that is yeah, the inspiration of Johan Cruyff and for Luke can we expect to see you at centre back tomorrow um, to be honest I'm not too sure yet um, we'll have to wait till, till tomorrow when he names the team so I'll find out then. Hi, Eric. Um, it's, it's obviously a great tie with, with Barcelona, these two games, but sandwiched in between, you've got a big Premier League game against Leicester and then a cup final. Do you look beyond these ties with Barcelona and sort of plan your teams for the next week, or is it just is it literally one game at a time and picking the strongest team for, for each well, one? Of course, as a manager, you have a, a certain planning, but yeah, the first game... Is always uh, um, is the game coming up is the most important game, and that also can change your your plans because of performances, uh, because of maybe tactics uh, next opponent, uh, because of injuries or suspensions or whatever. But um, yeah, um, first game coming up most important. Um, Neil and David, if I could just ask one one to each. Um, Luke, how would you describe the Luke Shaw we see now compared to in those first couple of games at the start of the season? <laughs> and how much is it down to the manager? Um, no, I think obviously not just myself, but I think the team in the first two games was 
was nowhere near where where we should should have been at. Um, it was obviously a very difficult start, but I think you know we've learned from that and we've grown as a team, not just individuals but as a team. And I think now collectively it's showing in in our performances and and where we're going. Um, of course, it helps with the manager. He's he's been really good and you know shown a lot of trust in me and. You know, my main thing is is to to repay that trust with with good performances and to help the team as as much as possible. And Eric, you've referenced um, Johan Cruyff before, and and I saw what you said about your time at, at Ajax and the pictures on the wall. Is this in many ways a dream fixture for you? Even though it doesn't matter what competition it's in, just the fixture itself. Oh, I I like it. Um, I was here before in Spain, uh, Madrid, Valencia. But yeah, it's great to face Barcelona, um, and so I like the philosophy of this club, and that is the football, the adventure, um, bring up so many good players and, and big teams. So uh, we are really looking forward to face them. Uh, hi, Eric. Um, given the history and status of Barcelona and Manchester United, this fixture could you know, very well be a Champions League final, but it's obviously a Europa League playoff. What does that say about where both clubs are at? at the moment, and does it show how much work there is still to be done for particularly Manchester United to get back to where you want to be? Yeah, I think it, that's the truth. As both clubs, you are in the Europa League, and I think both clubs have the ambition to be in the Champions League and not even just to be in the Champions League. They want to have a really impact in the Champions League, to be uh, go along the group stage, be uh, after the winter, go in semi-finals and finals and win even. But uh, the reality is we are in Europe League and it tells that both clubs they needed a reset and I think we are both um, uh, on a journey uh, and we are both, I think we are both in the right direction and so uh, I think it's excited to, um, exciting to, to face each other tomorrow night and because it will help both clubs because you know where you are, it's a good test and uh, you get challenged and from such tests you get better. So now I heard, so sorry, if you now repeat one. <laughs> hasta, que, ahora sí, ¿Hasta qué punto ver a un Barça tan completo en defensa condiciona vuestro planteamiento para la eliminatoria de mañana? ¿Cómo afecta? Gracias. Oh, yeah. uh, it's very clear. When you see the stats of Barcelona, uh, that is uh, impressive, but I think the, they defend well. But I think the uh, biggest skill is that they have so many possession. And that's so, I refer to Johan Cruyff. Johan Cruyff, one of his big centers was, when you have the ball, the opponent doesn't have the ball and they can't score. Question over there. Buenas tardes, Laia Coel de, de RACU. S'ha parlat molt de, de la intensitat de la Premier League en diferència de la Lliga Espanyola, que la Premier League és una lliga molt més intensa físicament. Fins a quin punt creus que hi ha aquesta diferència i si creus que això pot marcar l'eliminatòria? Gràcies. I think one thing what is true, uh, that is, um, I think it's objective, that the Premier League is uh, high intense football. And, but I think also the La Liga is a really strong league and there are many good clubs in and also I think La Liga is a um, so high intense uh, league. So I think, uh, I don't think there will be a big difference between the two teams on that fact. Okay, uh, last two, one there and then Paul Sí, hola. Laia Tudel de Catalunya Radio. Ha parlat abans, de, li han preguntat per De Jong, demà es tornarà a trobar amb Frenkie De Jong. A l'estiu vostè el va voler pel United. Per què creu que no el va convèncer? Per què fitxés pel United? Uh, I don't know if we want him. <laughs> no, uh, but it's... Fr Frenkie is an incredible good player and for every club in the whole world he will... He will strengthen the squad because he has a unique quality. And, um, so if you can get him in your squad, your, your team will be stronger. So, question for Luke, please. Uh, Casemiro seems to have made quite a big impact since he came. <clears throat> what kind of 
um, assurance does he give you when he's in the team uh, in front of you as a defender? Um, yeah, no, obviously a lot. Um, I think it's been quite obvious to see when you know how important he is to the team when when obviously he's been not playing. Um, but I think for us as as defenders, it it gives us that sort of feeling that we know there's a lot of security, especially because you know with with his positioning where he always is and. You know, he loves to win the ball back and tackle. And, you know, I think that's a couple of things we always say to him that, you know, he likes to give the ball away so he can go and, go and win it back. But, um, no, I think uh, he's a, an extremely important player for us. And, you know, I'm very happy to have him back tomorrow night because, you know, like I said, um, he's, he's been a big miss for us. OK, thank you very much.